Hello again, everyone, uh, and thanks for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. On the uh, 10th day of December, 2020, I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, uh, no hazardous weather graphics on any of the three charts here, so no watches, warnings, or advisories out anywhere in the state. Uh, was a fog advisory, dense fog advisory for the greater Anchorage area. Uh, earlier today, and that may kick into effect again tonight. Other than that, uh, really looking pretty good all across the state. Otherwise, uh, did have a pretty active front, uh, bring uh, uh, gusts, actually some strong winds, and uh, narrow band of heavy precipitation to the eastern Aleutians uh, during the day today, overnight hours, and uh, through the day today. And that extended up towards the Perbilof Islands. And, uh, but behind that, as you can see, quite a bit of clearing, uh, classic uh, frontal uh, structure there, the clear, clearing out right behind the front, and then getting into the uh, showers there back with the main low center from ADAC on out towards Shimia. And uh, a few clouds spilling up into Kodiak Island, and some clouds also there, Bristol Bay, southeast bearing along the southwest coast up to St. Lawrence Island, kind of bucking the northerly surface winds there. And uh, another system there, weakening off the southeast coast uh, brought a little bit of moisture into the southern areas there mostly just clouds precipitation amounts uh, last time i checked were pretty sparse with just a few hundredths of an inch falling in a few locations there most of precipitation down over the queen charlotte islands and even that was only a tenth to a third of an inch or four tenths in the 12-hour period ending this afternoon Otherwise, back up over the northwest interior from the Yukon River, back out across Seward Peninsula, all the way up to the western Arctic coast, uh, pretty cold temperatures with a upper level, cold upper low over the area up there, and that's why it's showing up as uh, white, because temperatures are below zero a fair ways uh, throughout the day today, all the way to the Arctic coast and the Seward Peninsula. And then you pick up some clouds up over the northeast interior to the eastern central Arctic coast, but not much in the way of any precipitation with that. Winds are a little gusty on the eastern Arctic coast uh, today, up to about 30, 35 miles an hour in some locations. Otherwise, uh, much stronger winds with that front uh, that uh, affected the uh, Nikolsky area. They had a peak gust of 77 miles per hour. That occurred late last evening. You can see the front's moving pretty slow, but uh, St. George Island had a 67 mile per hour peak wind gust today, and uh, Akun Island there just east of Unalaska Island, but uh, west of False Pass, the run right there, the observation site had a 66 mile per hour wind gust, and uh, Dutch Harbor 63 miles an hour. Uh, go along with their uh, 2.28 inches of rain they had in the last 12 hours, as a 12 hour amount there, coming down pretty good and over an inch uh, at Okun Island, but uh, that really cuts off. Cold Bay only had one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation and uh, about a quarter of an inch fell at St. George Island there. So uh, pretty sparse on the rain, more of a widespread wind producer. Winds gusting up toward 50 miles an hour, 51 miles an hour at Cold Bay that, uh, this afternoon and have picked up to about 50 miles an hour there at Cape Nuanem on the southwest coast. Otherwise, uh, not too bad. Uh, fair skies and light winds over the interior. And that system weakening off the southeast coast uh, really isn't expected to produce too much more in the way of any precipitation. In fact, what I have drawn on there is a little excessive from what actually fell. As I mentioned, uh, just a few hundredths of an inch falling there. Uh, a little bit more up with that trough up along the eastern north, eastern north coast or eastern north gulf coast. About a third of an inch of uh, liquid precipitation fell at Yakutat today. Some of that could have been mixed with snow. Otherwise, uh, Cordova also had about an inch of snow, and uh, Homer picked up an inch of snow as well. Uh, actually, I should have extended that uh, moisture field with the trough a little farther down there into Cook Inlet, southern Cook Inlet into Kachemak Bay. Uh, about uh, maybe a tenth of an inch of snow, Port Muller, 
or Seldovia, I'm sorry, but roughly a half inch to an inch around Homer and uh, light snow showers up uh, areas that sit in the valley. And then that kind of expands up over the uh, Yukon River area in the Yukon Flats with an upper level trough and a band of uh, light moisture with that back to the western Arctic coast. But amounts were very light and the heavy, heaviest precipitation again over the eastern Aleutians and uh, the Pribilofs. And we'll see for tonight, uh, high pressure continues to dominate the uh, mainland areas of Alaska and now keep clear skies along the North Gulf Coast, variably cloudy, uh, especially on the east and southern parts of Kodiak Island. But Bristol Bay uh, looking pretty good for the most part, but winds will be diminishing. That front really weakens uh, along with the moisture field there, a pretty narrow band now of just uh, light rain. For the eastern Aleutians, winds really come down. Stays a little breezy on the Alaska Peninsula, but even those winds will be on the decrease, as well as the uh, Yukon Cusquam Delta coast as the main gradient shifts up over the northern Bering Sea. And winds will be east northeast, uh, St. Lawrence Island, maybe gusts 35, much like you saw today. But uh, interior Alaska, pretty uh, good, mostly clear skies, areas, low clouds, fog, uh, patchy flurries possible, uh, especially in the valley areas or near Cook Inlet and a few uh, showers or rain or snow showers possible for the northern panhandle. Uh, northerly winds kind of gusty in Lynn Canal today up to 35 miles an hour and uh, that'll kind of uh, downsloping winds there will kind of put a halt on any heavier precipitation but just a risk of some light snow showers and lingering showers along the south coast still the remnants of that weak system there west of the Queen Charlotte's and a weak trough uh, with the upper level low Brings a chance of snow, Yukon Flats, Eastern Arctic Coast, again, very light precipitation and breezy and showery, mostly in the form of rain for the Central and Western Aleutian, Aleutians. And moving on to uh, forecast for Friday, uh, looks a uh, chance of snow along the Southwest Coast as some of that moisture may have that a little too far to the north there, but uh, chance of precipitation, mixed precipitation, Kodiak Island, but gradient starting to tighten up as a, a strengthening Arctic high there over the Arctic Ocean up to 1,044 millibars. And then the uh, low pressure area that develops on that front, uh, main front kind of washes out over the Bering Sea there with uh, mostly just showers over the uh, Western Aleutians, rain or snow showers there, rain showers that'll extend, mixed precipitation mostly extending in toward the uh, ADAC, but for the uh, Atka area and probably the Fox Islands, mainly just rain uh, at the lowest elevations. And uh, panhandle, chance of moisture, just a slight chance, really uh, doesn't look all that significant. But uh, uh, I'd say mostly in the form of rain down toward Dixon entrance and a mix up to the north. But again, amounts will be very light and probably have that a little bit overdone. But the interior looking at winds on the increase again, as I mentioned with tightening gradient. So places like Delta Junction will start to see the winds increase all the southwest interior. And higher elevations, Indian Mountain, for example, will see an uh, increase in, could see gusts 30, 25, 30 miles an hour. But no wind on the Arctic coast, that could lead to areas of uh, low clouds and fog with some possible IFR conditions or marginal VFR. And we'll take a look at first day of the weekend on Saturday, that system drops off to the south, really isn't much of a factor, but easterly flow keeps a chance of moisture for Kodiak Island, windy and mostly clear and chilly over interior Alaska. Big increase in the winds over the northern panhandle, as well as much of the area even down to the south. But the uh, biggest increase will be uh, Juneau up through Lynn Canal to Skagway. And uh, rain and showers over the Aleutians. Lows for tonight, anywhere from 25 to 35 below. The coldest area is there, northern Cuscombe Valley into the west central interior. And um, maybe a shade below zero in the Susitna Valley to uh, 10 degrees above for the Kenai Peninsula, upper 20s northern Panhandle, lower 30s south, and uh, mid 30s for the Bering Sea, Aleutians, Privilas, 15, St. Lawrence Island. Highs for tomorrow, staying below zero north and west of the Alaska Range, all the way to the Arctic Coast. Teens to near 20, south central Alaska to uh, near 30 along the North Gulf Coast, lower 40s, portions of the Panhandle. And upper 30s, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, upper 30s out there in the Aleutians. And uh, Arctic coast, uh, either side of zero throughout the day tomorrow, followed by lows on Saturday morning. Again, anywhere from 20 to 30 below zero, uh, anywhere in the interior north of the Alaska Range or northwest of the Alaska Range. See uh, McGrath, Nikolai, possibly down toward 30 below, up toward Galena. Otherwise, uh, the southeast coast, northern Panhandle, mid-20s around Skagway, Haines to uh, lower to mid-30s along the central and south coast. And uh, 
10 below, so sit in the valley to 10 above. Uh, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. Highs Saturday afternoon. Again, below zero, but not too far below, north of the Alaska Range. And highs uh, anywhere from 5 to 15 for the Manuska Susitna Valleys. Lower 40s, Kodiak Island. Mid 40s, Southern Panhandle. Lower 30s to the north. And near 40 over the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Take a look at the first line weather graphic. Friday morning, IFR, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, over toward uh, Mackenzie Bay. And then also heading south there into some marginal VFR and then back into the IFR areas of the uh, uh, Yukon Flats there, south to about uh, 40 mile country on down to possibly Northway Toke, otherwise marginal VFR, Eastern Alaska Range into the Northwestern Copper River Basin, possibly into the Fairbanks area or Nanana Healy. Western interior though, uh, VFR even along and off the coast. Marginal for the Perbaloffs, marginal for St. Lawrence Island, and a swath of VFR out there over the central Bering Sea, heading in toward Nikolsky, but marginal VFR back into the areas from Atka to Shimianat too. Kodiak Island, could see some marginal VFR on the uh, central and south coastal areas to uh, Sitkanak up to possibly Yosinki. And southern Alaska though, VFR, possible lower conditions, northern Panhandle, uh, and VFR over the southern three quarters of the southeast coast. And then for the afternoon, central and northern Panhandle could see some marginal VFR with some IFR, Lynn Canal down toward Juneau and a little to the south. Interior looking really good, just some uh, leftover marginal VFR possible there near the Yukon River up toward the eastern Brooks Range, over toward Northway and Toke, eastern and maybe Nabezna as well, but uh, Copper River Basin, VFR, North Gulf Coast, Cook Inlet, all of southern western Alaska, even the Arctic coast there, VFR, with just a little bit of marginal VFR in the Chukchi Sea. Uh, uh, the Bering Sea looking good, just a lot of uh, areas of marginal VFR with minimal IFR for the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Unalaska Island. And then for Saturday morning, good VFR, all interior Alaska, including the Arctic coast and much of the Chukchi Sea could see some marginal VFR along and on the north side of the St. Lawrence Island area, but the southwest coast, uh, Nunavak Island in the VFR, Pribilof, so right on the edge of the IFR zone there that extends down toward Unalaska Island, Western Alaska Peninsula, patchy IFR, Kodiak Island there and south of Kamishak Bay, otherwise marginal, maybe Southern Cook Inlet, trying to get into Kachemak Bay up the, uh, Kenai, up the Kenai Peninsula there on the east side, but not quite making it to Prince William Sound. Southeast coast, another story, marginal VFR possible with IFR possible in the eastern border. Saturday afternoon, VFR for the southeast coast there. Uh, VFR all the interior Alaska to the Arctic coast, but marginal VFR, southern Kenai Peninsula, possibly western Prince William Sound, eastern Turnigan Arm, as well as uh, Kodiak Island. And then a patch of IFR there for the uh, Pribilof Islands up to St. Matthew Island and marginal up to St. Lawrence Island. The Lucians marginal, Alaska Peninsula marginal VFR. Otherwise, uh, again, Arctic Coast VFR and from areas through the Bering Strait as well. Passes Anatubic, marginal VFR becomes VFR rather quickly tomorrow morning. It could be VFR the entire day for both Anatubic and Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill will be VFR all day tomorrow and rainy as well. Windy, good VFR. Isabel, VFR. And Mintasta, VFR. Tanita, looking good with VFR flying. Same thing for Portage VFR. Chilkoot and White, uh, go with marginal VFR tomorrow at times. Uh, could maybe be some IFR, but I doubt it. Uh, optimistically, I'll stick with marginal conditions. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet up over the Alaska Peninsula. At the surface there, just south of St. Matthew Island, or away south of St. Matthew Island, and up hugging the North Gulf Coast east side of Kodiak, 2,000 feet over the southeast coast. And the warmer air there, you see 4 to 8,000 feet. That'll stay to the south with the uh, storm track will be going due east. And for icing, possible considerable moderate rime icing uh, for the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, just light to very isolated moderate mix there for the uh, Bering Sea area, as well as the Aleutians and the Northern Panhandle. Taking a look at the jet stream, upper level ridging there in the Gulf, uh, right up across Kodiak Island at uh, jet stream level, 33,000 feet as well as 18,000 feet. And that directing the jet southerlies, 115 knots central bearing up and over, and then northwesterlies, uh, 100 to 110 knots over the across the interior from south northwest to southeast and toward the northern panhandle. 
9,000 feet, uh, subtly 40 to 55 knots there, central and eastern Bering Sea, uh, but 40 to 60 knots toward the Alaska Peninsula and northwest 2025 from the Cuscombe Valley of the Western Interior down across uh, South Central Alaska. And uh, pretty gusty winds for the Bering Sea at 3,000 feet. That'll translate into turbulence, uh, something like this. Widespread moderate chop, Alaska Peninsula into Kodiak Island and the uh, Bristol Bay area to Togiak Bay, possibly southern Cuscombe Delta. Light to isolated moderate up across uh, the Norton Sound area. Hey there, my favorite shooting stars. Trace here. There are meteor showers, and then there are meteor shows, and the Geminids is the latter. This week's meteor shower is going to be spectacular, like the best of 2020. Do not miss it. Head outside after midnight. Bring chairs, blankets, and warm drinks. Look for the characteristic hourglass in the south. That's Orion. Now imagine he's looking back over his shoulder at his neighbor, Gemini. The shower will radiate there, peaking around 2 a.m. with as many as 120 meteors per hour. The Geminids are the result of Phaeton, an asteroid that behaves like a comet. It has an eccentric orbit of the sun, but doesn't form a tail. When Phaeton passed close to us in 2017, astronomers discovered it's blue all over due to the extreme heat during its many trips around the sun. I feel you, Phaeton. Enjoy the show and keep looking up. been to the beach and noticed litter like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore or a bunch of deflated balloons that say happy birthday floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man-made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fish eat plastic, we eat fish. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris too, or get their propellers tangled. 
We need the ocean and everything in it. And the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris. about marine debris. A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at sea ice analysis today. Not a lot of change uh, from yesterday or the day before. Uh, still uh, lighter ice there through the Bering Strait with a heavier up across just about all of, uh, say, the Kotzebue Sound area, Norton Sound, uh, Western Arctic coast, and uh, made a little bit of uh, thinner ice there on the uh, east side. Otherwise, coastal water forecasts. Southeast winds 20 knots on the south coast, 8 to 9 foot seas tomorrow. East southeast 15 knots, 78 foot seas there on the north coast. Lynn Canal, north winds uh, 25 knots, seas 5 feet, but southeast winds at 15 with 3 foot seas with the central southern inside waters. Outlook for Saturday, first day of the weekend, got gales here on the uh, Prince of Wales Island coastline and the marine area there at 35 knots out of the east. Small craft advisories on the central coast, east winds 25 to 30 knots, 16 to 19 foot seas, and then 20 knot winds there for the uh, north coast at, uh, from the east, seas 13 feet. Lincoln Canal, north winds sustained 30 knots, probably some higher gusts with seas at 6 feet. Stevens Passage, north 25, seas 5 feet, and southeast 20 for Clarence Strait with seas at 4 feet. And northern Cook Inlet, northeasterlies 15 knots. Small craft advisories though south of the Forelands uh, for 25 knot winds, and northeast 30 knots for Kamishak Bay. Barren Islands east at 25, seas 7 feet, and northeast 20 knots there for the western North Gulf Coast. 15 knots with uh, outflow gusts to 40 knots, Copper River Delta there, eastern North Gulf Coast, and uh, north 10 for Prince William Sound. But there'll be some gusty outflow winds as well, but nothing too serious. And for Saturday, northeast 15, Prince William Sound sees three feet. Small craft advisories, north Gulf Coast, east 25, northeast 30. For the Barren Islands, uh, same thing for Kamishak Bay, northeast 30 knots, 8 to 13 foot seas there. Southern Cook Inlet, hold on to the small craft advisory uh, for Saturday, northeast 25 and 15 knots north of Forelands. We've got gales for Kodiak Island tomorrow from the east-northeast with the uh, northeast winds in Chillicoff Strait, east 35 there on the east side of Kodiak. Uh, full gales, Sitkanak to uh, Cape Sarachev, east 40 to 45 knots, strongest there from Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, and also east 40 on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. With 12 foot seas, Bristol Bay, northeast 35 knots, seas 7 feet. 
Outlook for Saturday. Winds come down uh, Kodiak Island, northeast 30 for uh, Shelikoff Strait, northeast 25. East side of Kodiak, east 25, Sitkanak to Castle Cape. Reverse of direction, Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev there, Pacific side of the peninsula, southwest 30 knots, 20 foot seas. And then we've got gales for the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southeast 35, and Bristol Bay, gale warnings, east at 35 knots, seas up to 8 feet. Eastern Aleutians, Unalaska Island, north. Uh, northeast, 25 knots, uh, Unmak Island, southeast, 10 to 20 knots, Sadak and Atka, uh, average it out to a south wind at 20 to 25 knots with southwesterlies at 25 for Amchitka, Kiska, Shumi and Atu, northwest 25, 16 foot seas. A little bit stronger on Saturday, west winds, uh, western Aleutian, Shimi to Kiska, 30 knots, gale warnings for Amchitka Island, and 30 to 35 knot westerlies for Adak and Atka. And small craft advisors for the Fox Islands, west winds 25 to 30 knots with seas 12 to 16 feet. And for the uh, southwest coast, easterly is 30 to 35 knots with the gale warnings out uh, for the Cuscom Delta coastline, east 30 for the Pribloss, 45 knot easterly for St. Matthew Island, seas near 25 feet, St. Lawrence Island east at 40. And the outlook for Saturday, St. Lawrence Island and the Yukon Delta Coast, east northeast, 35 knots, gale warnings there. Also for St. Matthew Island, east 35 knots. 40 knot easterlies in the forecast for the Cuscom Delta coastline with seas at 13 feet, Pribloss north at 30 knots. Beaufort Sea Coast, central and east side tomorrow. East winds 20 knots, northeast 20 for the west side. Brisk, or small craft advisories from Cape Beaufort to Cape or to Wales for northeast at 25 knots. And we've got uh, gale warnings from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort. East winds 35 knots. Otherwise, brisk wind advisories. Gradient tightens up all the Arctic coast there. East 25 to as high as 30 knots. For tonight, again, that front weakens and doesn't move a whole lot there as a new low develops, as you can see coming onto the chart there. So wind and rain diminishing there. In fact, no, uh, just about no precipitation. I'll get into uh, the Alaska Peninsula. Definitely not Bristol Bay, just grazing the southwest coast. And for tomorrow, Saturday, uh, chance of uh, moisture there for the Alaska Peninsula. And then on, or I'm sorry, Saturday, fair and windier over all of interior Alaska into the northern panhandle with not so much wind on the Arctic coast and north slope. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.